For both realistic and stylized scenes, Eevee is a great option for its speed, but sometimes even Eevee can end up becoming quite slow. So here, I'll go over the basics as well as some slightly more advanced tips to speed things up, and in this case reduce render times by over 90%. You can see here that this image takes about a minute and a half to render. This isn't awful, but we can do way better. Here is a render with the same visual output, but it's only taking 9 seconds now. And let's get into the settings which we can use to achieve this. Firstly, sample count. The default sample count is probably higher than you'll need, and personally I find somewhere between the 32 and 128 range is good for most scenes. Now these post-processing settings like ambient occlusion, bloom, depth of field and such, they won't have too much impact on performance, and for the most part I'd leave them on, but regarding bloom I would leave this for the compositing stage because you can get a much better output there, and I'll show you this later in the video. Screen space reflections is an exception here, this can actually be noticeable good depending on your scene, and if you need more performance then disabling refraction and using half resolution can also help. But yeah, only use what you actually need for the scene. Identify stuff that you don't need, cut it out, boost performance basically. This volumetric tile size is a pretty big factor, it will make your volumes appear more detailed if you select a smaller value. Personally, I would always keep this at 2 pixels because it just looks atrocious when you use larger tile values, and I don't think this is a place where you should be cutting corners, but I'm sure there's some scenarios where it's fine. You can also toggle volumetric lighting, volumetric shadows, and you can mess around with the sample count as well to further hone in your performance around what you need. Generally, unless you're running pretty heavy and complicated volumetrics, you won't need to, to worry about increasing or messing with these too much. Just keep them fairly low to save performance. High quality normals, you should not usually need these. The shadow cube and cascade size is actually quite important, and using high bit depth and soft shadows can make quite a big difference. I'd recommend generally keeping these as high quality as you can afford to, and soft shadows are good for realistic renders. Having non-soft shadows can be pretty good for stylized or anime renders as well. But again, if you're running on performance, these are all corners which you can cut if you want to. Using Simplify is one of the biggest tips I can give you guys. By using this you can limit the maximum subdivisions of geometry, which is the big thing. That will basically just mean that geometry can be optimized on the fly for both your viewport and render. Now away from the render settings tab, we can change our resolution. Going to a low resolution will obviously make it faster, but in my experience with Eevee this doesn't make nearly as big of a difference as it does in cycles, and so I just would not mess with this too much, just keep it at a moderate resolution of 1080p. Now the decimate modifier is an incredible modifier and you can use this on each object. This is sort of similar to using simplify but it's much smarter. There's often not much visual difference and there's a big performance boost from it, as you can render half or even a third of the original geometry. Now in terms of textures and shaders, the shader which I have right now is dynamic, that's part of the allure of it. And while it looks very cool, it isn't necessarily great for performance, but obviously certain scenarios call for certain things, sometimes this can't be helped. And we can cut corners still, even with things such as the sky here. And here is our sub 9 second render done, compositing and all. Speaking of compositing, I did say that I would show you guys a better alternative to Bloom. The most important node that I use overall is the Glare node. You can see the before and after of this, it adds so much. It's essentially just an amazing customizable bloom pass on your render. All you need to do is click Shift A at the glare node and dial in the settings to get the visuals that you're looking for. You can copy mine if you need a decent starting point. While the optimizations that I've gone over in this video are fairly simple, they can work on much more complicated and higher fidelity scenes with big simulations and lots of geometry going on. All of these scenes that I'm showing now are still only taking 9 seconds and they are much more realistic and high fidelity than the scene that we were just working on in many ways. Again, this is the beauty of using Eevee. Now, while I do love Eevee and I think that it is catching up in many ways, I'd still prefer Cycle overall for a lot of things. Good old race tracing can be very hard to beat, but Eevee is certainly coming a long way in getting there. Now, I hope that this tutorial was helpful. If you guys want to see how I created that manga style cell shader in this video, I'll link the tutorial right here, and I won't take up any more of your time. Hope this was useful. It's been Yizen, and goodbye. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.